continuing on in the last part of chapter two, we get a really, really, really strong clue about Dracula's vampirism. And I'm not even going to go into it because, again, you're going to tell me. So we're going to go into chapter three. And chapter three also begins with some vampiric lore and that it says, what meant the giving of the crucifix of the garlic of the wild rose of the mountain ash? And of course, what is those, those uh, excuse me, what are the meanings of those types of things? Now, last week I talked about how the character of Count Dracula in the novel is based on a real person, Vlad Tepish, Count Dracula, which either could mean the son of the dragon or son of the devil. And he was a real person who uh, was from Wallachia, the Count of Wallachia. And it's no mere supposition that Stoker based his character on this real life person, because in chapter three, we hear Dracula speak of this. And he says, the Ugaric tribe bore down from Iceland the fighting spirit with which Thor and Woden gave them, which the berserkers displayed to such fell intent on the seaboards of Europe. I, and of Asia and Africa too, till the peoples thought that the werewolves themselves had come. You see me winking there? Yeah, that's something you, to which you should pay attention. But not only werewolves. The dying people held that in their veins rang the blood of those old witches who expelled from Scythia had mated with the devils in the desert. Now, the dying peoples were the people that the, uh, the Ugaric tribe were uh, killing, not them themselves. Now, the Scythians were a race, uh, an ethnic, I shouldn't say race, were an ethnic group in Russia who were very well known for their bloodthirsty ways. They were extremely bloodthirsty and very violent. And Scythians had no mercy. So you also have that connection with the race of people who were also thought to perhaps have um, drunk blood during uh, some of their lifestyle. They would have certainly skulls for uh, drinking cups that they would uh, from which they would... Um, imbibe. Now, the devils of the desert, I'm not sure who that was, but I think it's probably referring to uh, Muslims. Remember, Vlad Tepish fought the Muslims, aka the Moors and the Turks, and ran them out of Wallachia. So even though he is considered quite an unsavory character to us, he would have been a real hero to his people in many ways because of this. But then uh, Dracula himself goes on to say, Wallach and the Magar went down beneath the crescent. And the crescent is very likely referring to the crescent and the star of uh, Islam. And he goes on to say, who was it but one of my own race who as Vovode crossed the Danube and beat the Turk on his own ground? This was a Dracula indeed. Woe is it that uh, his own unworthy brother, when he had fallen, sold his people to the Turk and brought the shame of slavery on them. Was it not this Dracula, indeed, who inspired the other of his race at a later age again and again, brought his forces over the great river into Turkey land? So at any rate, he's talking about, I'm not going to belabor that point, he's actually talking about himself. He was the uh, Wallachian who went down and fought against the Turks, a.k.a. the Muslims, and ran them back, and then made, essentially, uh, Transylvania safe for Christianity. And uh, then he goes on to talk about, uh, Harker does, excuse me, we're segueing from Dracula now, but on to talking about Harker and what Harker sees when he looks out the window, which again, I'm not going to go into because I want you to tell me about that. And also, he also hears um, from other beings or entities in the old castle and uh, some kind of nefarious dealings going on at that point.